Welcome to Electra Online. When it comes to thermodynamics, there are two questions we get asked a lot. One of them is, why do we use C sub V for an isobaric process? The other one, well, we'll show you that one on the next video. But let's go back to this one right here. Why is that really a question? What does that really mean? Well, we have four thermodynamic processes. We have isobaric processes, isovolumetric, isothermic, and adiabatic. When it comes to an isobaric process, notice we have a constant pressure. For isovolumetric pre uh, process, we have a constant volume. And for isothermic process, and I did not write that down, we have constant temperature. And also notice we have the first law of thermodynamics that relates pressure, volume, and temperature to one another in any one of these processes. Now the first law of thermodynamics tells us that the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. And so when we try to calculate Q, the heat added to the gas or the heat taken away from the gas depending upon if Q is positive or negative, well, it can be calculated like this, where, uh, where we have Q equals N C sub P delta T when we're dealing with a constant pressure process, isobaric, and Q equals N C sub V delta T when we're trying to calculate Q for an isovolumetric process where the, the volume remains constant. And so it seems to be clear we use C sub V for constant volume and C sub P for constant pressure. But then sometimes they seem to use C sub V in an isovolumetric process, no, not in, in a isobaric process. And they go, well, I'm confused. Why is that happening? Well, it turns out we do not use C sub V to calculate Q, but when it comes to calculating the change in internal energy, we always use, and notice, we always use C sub V. C sub V, C sub V, no matter what process it is. The change in, in the internal energy is always the number of moles times the heat, specific heat relative to the constant volume times delta T, no matter what process it is. And of course, for a constant temperature a process, since delta T is equal to zero, delta U is equal to zero. In other words, when we have a constant temperature process, the internal energy cannot change because the temperature doesn't change. You can only have a change in the internal energy if the temperature changes. So therefore, that is what confuses the students when they look at a thermodynamic process. Where does the C sub V come from? Well, we always use it, no matter what the process is, and of course here we would use it as well, except delta T is equal to zero, but whenever we're calculating the change in internal energy, we always use C sub V, no matter what process we're dealing with. But, when we're trying to calculate the change, the heat added, or the, the heat taken away, from a process, then we use C sub P for a constant pressure process and C sub V for a constant volume process. And so that is what confuses students. So hopefully with this video and answer that question from our viewers, we have it all straightened out. And that is how it's done when it comes to thermodynamics. Well, yes, the A to B, we use 1 to 2 or A to B. It's a process. We start at A and we go to B. So the gas is in this state and then it goes to this state. The gas is in this state and it goes to that state. It's in this state, it goes to that state. So that's typically what that represents. You go from one state to another state, from A to B or from 1 to 2. Does that have to be a certain state or any state? It can be any state. But how it changes depends upon which process we're dealing with. Okay.